Good morning. I'm David Talbot, Managing Director and Head of Research here at Red Cloud Securities. Our next presenter is Kyle Floyd. He's CEO of Vox Royalty. Vox is a high growth precious metals royalty and streaming company with over 50 royalties, many of which are providing initial revenue for the company over the next couple of years. Kyle, you're going to have 15 minutes to present, then we'll have a five minute Q&A session at the end. So why don't you take it away? Terrific. And thanks everyone for joining. And Dave, thank you for this conference. Um, tr tremendous uh, opportunity to be in front of the Red Cloud audience. And uh, as we get into the story, uh, Dave also covers us on the research side of the equation. So uh, for anybody looking for more information, please feel reach out to Dave. Uh, they do an excellent job for us covering Vox Royalty Corp. It has been a little while since we last presented. So while I give you the opportunity to take a quick glance at the cap table and an overview on the company and its assets, uh, while Vox continues to lead the space in acquisitions at great value, uh, there has been a lot of change in our business since we last presented at the Red Cloud Conference. We have led the industry in growth as we said we would. We doubled revenue guidance. We have added more than $50 million of NAV to the business. We have added almost a half dozen near-term producing assets to the business. We've gone from three producing assets to five producing assets and we led the royalty businesses in terms of stock price performance in the year 2021. So what has allowed Vox to accomplish so much in just 12 months? We have built our business differently in the royalty sector. We focus on finding undervalued third-party royalties all over the world. And we have a database and an intellectual property advantage that allows us to accomplish that. Complementing our intellectual property is a team that's been in the industry for more than 50 years combined. We have geologists and mining engineers at the front lines of our business and one of the truly best technical teams in the industry. First and foremost, looking for great assets and then understanding the quality of the royalty that overlays that asset. And then being able to connect all the dots from database to deal execution to bring these royalties into the Vox portfolio. And that is what's allowing us to lead the entire industry on return on invested capital. So who is Vox? We're a high growth, precious metals royalty company. We focus on precious metals, that being so we find deep value across the hard rock uh, mining sector. We will bring those royalties into the portfolio. We have the world's largest and most significant IP in the entire industry with over 8,000 royalties in our proprietary database. Exponential revenue growth in 2021 was realized for our investors. We said that would be accomplished, it was accomplished. Our growth rate in terms of acquiring assets at industry leading valuation multiples is unmatched in the industry. Very low geopolitical risk in the, risk in the portfolio. We're the world's second largest holding of hard rock mining royalties in Australia after Franklin, Nevada. And 80% of our assets in aggregate are in either Canada, the US or Australia. So what makes Vox royalty so unique? Vox, has again, led the industry in terms of acquiring assets in a very competitive royalty sector, our ability to find assets outside of competitive processes with very interesting and, and value accretive catalysts in front of them has allowed us to, to leverage the capital that's been invested into our business into industry leading returns. So what do we look for? We look for assets that are quality, assets that have been de-risked, assets that we believe are going to have material catalysts that crystallize value in these royalties in the very near future. And so we'll get into some of those examples. Vox has led the industry in terms of bringing assets online that have gone from pre-production into production. We don't typically pay a premium for an in-production asset where we find very deep value is on, on royalties and assets that are in the near-term production category where we find the deepest arbitrage opportunity and ability to unlock the value um, of our technical team that can find assets uh, that we believe are going to have very, very significant catalysts that are going to be de-risked ahead of schedule and have upside that maybe not is, is maybe not factored in by the market. And so when we went public in May of 2020, we had one producing asset. We now have five producing assets. We expect that to be seven producing assets as we get into the second half of this year and 13 as we get into 2024. That's industry leading growth in one of the key metrics for a business like Vox. 
A very important acquisition that was made in January uh, was the acquisition of the Limpopo Royalty. So this is a globally significant resource. This added over 50 million gold equivalent ounces and resource under royalty to our portfolio. One of the most significant royalty transactions I've witnessed uh, in my 10 plus years in the royalty space. What was so significant about this acquisition? Limpopo was a past producer. It's operated by Sabani Stillwater. It has 50 million gold equivalent ounces under resource that's made up of platinum, palladium, gold, rhodium, copper, and nickel. Tough to find a basket of commodities right now more attractive than what this asset comprises. It went out of production in 2009 as that bucket of metals, uh, those prices collapsed. The bucket, that bucket of metals is now up almost seven times where it was when this asset went out of production. All of the infrastructure is there. It was a previous producer, and Sabanier has restarted studies on this to prove the viability of restarting this asset at much higher metal prices, and has this in their two to five year plan to bring, bring back in production in South Africa. There are not many royalties to be acquired on the planet like this. We were able to buy it for $1.5 million in, in stock up front. That stock is restricted for two years. And then the rest of the acquisition price, which is a total of 10.4 million Canadian, is contingent on production and meaningful production being achieved and revenue being achieved by Fox. This exemplifies our ability to find extremely deep value in the sector, despite the competitive forces and the numerous royalty companies that exist. We find ourselves in uncompetitive waters, bringing in value that really hasn't been achieved since Franco and Royal really started the space in the late 80s and early 90s. You benchmark this transaction, it's made Vox the largest uh, holder of, uh, of, of golden fur ounces under resource, under royalty, uh, in the space of, of companies operating under $750 million market cap. We've got 90 million gold equivalent ounces under royalty making us the largest of our peer group. So how does Vox go about this? What are the key things that we look for? We use information all over the globe to get intelligence that advantages us, Vox, in finding assets that have very interesting and value accretive near-term catalysts. We use that information, we use our, our global database of over 8,000 royalties to once we find information on an asset, to go into our database to find, is there a royalty over that asset? Who owns the royalty? And then connecting that with our deal sourcing agents all around the world uh, to be able to connect the dots from asset identification to royal, royalty identification, to owner identification and execute that transaction and bring that into the portfolio. This slide gives uh, an example of a handful of royalties that we've been very successful in that model with. Um, these all happen to be gold assets that we acquired really pre-major catalysts uh, that have absolutely added a significant amount of value to Vox and our shareholders. We are able to replicate this systematically um, across the globe, uh, more so than anybody else in the sector. So why Vox? Why now? What's happening within the story that you should be paying attention to as an investor? First, it's an amazing opportunity to be an investor in a royalty company in, this, in the current market environment. Clearly, inflation is very real. We've been saying that for two years now. Uh, the inflationary costs that are affecting the miners uh, is very tangible and very impactful. As a royalty company, we're getting the benefit of higher commodity prices really across the board without the exposure to higher costs. That being said, the ability for our operating partners to raise capital and deploy funds into their assets at no cost of box has been exceptional. And we're seeing an, a tremendous amount of operate, operational and development advancements across the portfolio. This is a snapshot, I will not read them out, but it is a very significant um, opportunity to be invested in, in that all of these developments come to Vox shareholders without any additional capital being spent. These, these developments are demonstrably increasing the value of Vox every single day. There's more than a billion dollars being spent developing Vox assets. We had 170,000 meters being drilled last year on Vox royalty linked assets. We expect that to be well north of 200,000 ounces, 200,000 meters of drilling this year. Uh, and then we continue to see assets come online and come into production. As I mentioned, Vox has led the industry in terms of being able to find assets pre-production at great value 
and allowing those assets to mature within the portfolio on very aggressive timelines and catalyze and, and, and really crystallize value for the Vox shareholder. So we expect more than 10 producing assets by late 2023. We will continue to execute a disciplined growth strategy where we bring in assets at great value. And we expect to be able to continue to increase our liquidity uh, and the profile of our business in the capital markets. We have three research analysts covering us now. We would expect more. Uh, we are also going to be pursuing a NASDAQ listing uh, that we expect to be achieved in the middle part of this year. So when you look at Vox, both from a fundamental standpoint, you can see on this slide the growth in producing asset count. It's really unrivaled throughout the industry. Uh, it's industry-leading growth in, in all material respects. And then also, we will continue to invest in, in growing our capital markets profile, liquidity of our business, and the awareness of our business, as we believe that we're very uniquely positioned right now uh, in the marketplace to be a, uh, a haven for investors looking for growth and value. So Dave, with that, I will turn it over to you. Great, okay, thank you very much, Kyle. Uh, lots of time here for questions now. So uh, everybody please put uh, put the questions on the box and we'll get to as many as we can. So um, now you have a database and you target third party royalties, but have you ever really considered uh, royalty or stream creation, You know, working directly with companies that are seeking alternative means of financing? You know, so Dave, it's a question that we do get quite often. Really, our business model and the, the key competitive advantage that we have is this database of 8,000 plus royalties that's proprietary to Vox. Um, and so our ability to go unlock value, you know, who we're buying royalties from and, and to explain to the audience, we're buying third party royalties. So these are royalties not held by the operator. This is the prospector. This is the, the family that own land. This is the junior mining company that staked the land in the first instance. Royalties are created when the, the, the mining rights of this land passes on to another group. That's what we focus on buying. So what does that allow us to do? When we have a proprietary advantage there, we can go out to this, this group of unique holders of these royalty assets and provide liquidity and de-risking. And so that really allows us to find very, very deep value. When you kind of transition the model into providing capital on a, what we call an origination basis, so partnering with the mining companies, giving them capital to go develop, what happens is you're now competing with other royalty companies, number one, and also competing against the entire capital stack. So you're competing from equity to debt and all the, the structures in between. So we find that to actually be a very competitive sector, really driving down the returns that royalty companies can expect to realize. Um, so that's not our model. So out of sight, out of mind, essentially. Um, out of sight, out of mind, uh, and you know our ability to technically understand assets with our technical team on the front lines of our business and the, those proprietary advantages that those two um, uh, real assets complement each other and, and allow us to find better value. Right. Okay. Uh, can you explain to viewers the benefits of investing in a royalty company such as yours rather than directly in a mining development or exploration firm? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, the mining companies are out there doing the hard work. Uh, we need mining companies. It's absolutely a critical industry. I think governments around the world are starting to realize that. And so we're big fans of our mining company operators. But there are inherent um, challenges with the mining model uh, and the mining business in general. Uh, there's a tremendous amount of risk. Uh, most of, say, the mid cap uh, to small cap operators have single asset risk. So a royalty company like us that has 55 royalties and streams plus um, gives you a significant amount of diversification. Uh, we also are not, once we've bought royalty, we're not on the hook for future capital needs, whether that be for growth or whether that be for rectification, whatever that capital might be needed for, we're not on the hook for it. But we get all the advantages of a mining company raising capital, deploying that capital without dilution. So our, so our royalty interest is undiluted and it's typically at the top line. So we realize a, a, a percentage of revenue. That's how these royalties are, are usually structured. So what that means is the mining companies out there producing, you know, incentivized to go increase ounces, increase production, um, but they are facing higher costs and those costs are not passed through to us. So we get the benefit of higher commodity prices and the incentivization to, to increase the amount of resources and reserves and increase production, 
without being afflicted by the increased cost structure that mining companies uh, are realizing in this inflationary environment. So it's really a, a we're we're in an, in an advantage situation as a royalty holder in terms of less risk, and I would and I would argue more upside. Right, right. Okay. Uh, do you have any M and A uh, plans? You know, looking out for maybe to fund dilution. Uh, excuse me, to fund growth without further dilution. You know, perhaps merger with other royalty companies uh, that either have cash or cash flow. Well, M&A certainly is a, a hot topic in our industry. Um, Dave, you would have been following the, uh, the bid from Gold Royalty Corp to acquire Elemental. Um, you know, I think our grouping of assets is certainly a, a very attractive grouping of assets. We have, uh, in, in many ways, you know, if you separate the majors out of the equation, a first mover advantage, certainly in Australia with the second largest holding of hard rock mining royalties, their exceptional producing asset growth. Um, so, I, I, I don't know that we'll be the consolidator in the industry. I don't know that that is our mandate. Our mandate is to find value and continue to execute our business strategy. Um, but there is certainly some, some uh, I think, material um, players in the industry that are looking to grow their asset base uh, and grow the profile of their business. And uh, you know, there's a possibility that Vox uh, fits into um, into their plans. Right. Okay. You mentioned uh, creating value. So now, how do you plan to unlock that value? You know, your strategy to increase your PNAV. You know, maybe what are some of the metrics you use to to consider the acquisition of royalties? Yeah, a- absolutely. I mean, we we look at it on you know across um, what I think is the most comprehensive set of valuation metrics. Um, certainly more so than most royalty companies in our space. Something has to be a creative. Um, really uh, on all major metrics. So that's what is it bringing in terms of cash flow? What is it bringing in terms of NAV? And what is what is an expected IRR um, on that asset? And for the most part, most royalty companies will miss two of those, those metrics being accretive, if not really all three, where we look at it across those three metrics and a royalty has to fit um, that that model um, and be a creative across that entire spectrum of evaluation metrics. Most royalty companies cannot deliver that. They're paying, I don't know, 20 times, 15 times to 20 times for producing asset. They're paying 1.4, 1.3 times for producing assets. Uh, and they're paying one times NAV for assets that are out of production. So if you really stack that up across um, those valuation metrics and, and what truly is a creative and dilutive, uh, most royalty companies are are not hitting the metrics that we're able to hit. Right. Okay. Would you consider looking outside the precious metals universe? Well, perhaps in well, a green, green element. Yeah, we we do. So you know, for example, when we talked about how do we how do we grow in an undilutive way, um, you know, we found graphite royalties a great value. That's not our our focus is truly precious metals. However, when we find non precious, so that's got to be you know nothing in the ESG sensitive category. But metals like, say, vanadium, copper, nickel, we will buy those assets, iron ore, um, certainly in some cases as well. When we see those royalties on great projects that we can acquire at great value, we'll bring those in the portfolio. A good example of us um, utilizing that, um, that capability and that strategy is uh, we sold three or sorry, two graphite royalties onto electric royalties. It was a better fit within their portfolio. We thought value would ultimately be better realized in their portfolio. Um, and we sold that at a nice premium to where we bought those assets. And, and that's been a, a, an avenue for us to unlock value, realize um, uh, that value, and then deploy that into new royalty acquisitions, mostly in the precious metal space. Okay. Um, now you listed some of the new producing assets coming down the road. Can you maybe remind us some of the key pending revenue sources here? And then maybe specifically discuss the importance of Limpopo. Yeah, why don't I work in reverse order? Limpopo was a tremendous royalty acquisition. Uh, 50 million gold equivalent ounces uh, covered under royalty. It's the entire ore body. It's a past producer, Sabanier. Stillwater, $10 billion plus market cap. Uh, Platinum and palladium are going to be a, you know, obviously with what's going on um, globally right now, palladium is ripping. Um, There's going to be supply shortages of that metal. And when you look at a, a basket of metals that comprises this asset, platinum, palladium, gold, rhodium, nickel, copper, I, I challenge anyone really to find a better grouping of, of commodities in one single asset. 
and a previous producer mill on site concentrator on site it has all the infrastructure uh and it's got proven uh the ability the metallurgy is is proven to work so and that's usually an issue with these types of assets that are polymetallic is your metallurgy can be a, a very difficult processing um, situation that's not the case here so with the, this bucket of metal prices being seven times higher than it was when it went out of production um you know we believe that we've got one of the best assets in the royalty sector um that's uh that's positioned to come back online in the next two to five years so that asset really hard to hard to overstate the importance and, and the value that we found in terms of what's happening uh elsewhere in the portfolio we have a tremendous amount of growth in terms of producing assets. Hulong um, was expected actually to be in production already. They've had slight delays with the lockdowns uh, in Western Australia. It was really a bubble within a bubble, but we expect that to be producing this year. Autobor as well is pre-strip. So Hulong was in, is in construction in the final stages of construction. Autobor is in pre-strip operated by Northern Star. Pitampieris is guided to being in production this year. Mount Ida um, has awarded an EPC contract of $73 million. And Brits is part of Bushveld's already producing vanadium asset. Uh, and that is just an extension of an ore body that's already in production. So we also expect that to be in production in the next 18 to 24 months. As you get farther down the line, I won't talk about all these projects, um, but there is a tremendous amount of growth and development expenditure being spent on these projects with operators really guiding um, to their ability to be in production, what we would call a, you know, a medium term so Vox is really allowing investors to realize a ton of growth um, that I don't believe is being priced into uh, to our valuation. Okay, thank you very much, Kyle. Let's cut it there. So up next, everyone, we have Silver X Mining on Stream 1 and North Isle Copper on Stream 2. Okay, take care. Thank you.